we've all heard of this term called place. But many of us don't really think about what a place means or how it's made. Having read several international publications about urban planning, I'm delighted that the URA has recently published a book about placemaking with many examples and stories that I can relate to. In this video, I aim to explain what makes a place great and why we need more of them. So let's get started. What's a place you might ask? Well, here are some examples. This is a space. This is a place. This is a space. This is a place. This is a car parking space. This is Raffles Place. All places are spaces, but not all spaces are places. A physical space may be defined by the walls and boundaries around it, but it may or may not be inhabited by people. A place, on the other hand, is a vessel for collective memories and experiences. Confused? Let me explain. Experiences and memories are the emotional outcomes of human activities. And according to Jan Gell, there are three different types of human activities. Necessary, optional, and resultant activities. Examples of necessary activities are buying groceries and having a meal. Activities like these are important because they fulfill one's physiological needs. Optional activities are things like taking a walk because it is nice to do so, taking a break at a bench, and making small detours to discover something interesting. These are important too, because they fulfill one's need for safety and belonging. Resultant activities or social activities are spontaneous activities that arise from having a mix of necessary and optional activities. For example, greeting or having a chat with a neighbour you met, children intermingling and playing with other children they haven't met before, and meeting new people. Frequently having such connections, be it just saying hi, increases the chance of developing contacts and friendships, fulfilling one's need for esteem, love and belonging, and self-actualization. With the concept of these three activity types in mind, most activities in a space are necessary ones, with little optional and resultant activities. For example, people only walk in a car park because they need to. Places on the other hand, have a healthy mix of all three activities. People walk and stay in a park because they either need to commute somewhere or they want to simply because it is nice. So what is it about a physical environment that makes a place great? There are many elements to this, but they boil down to three main characteristics. A place is walkable, comfortable to stay in, great to meet at, and in addition, is often built to the human scale. Walking is something that many people do every day for survival, but the way an environment is shaped encourages different kinds of walking. In a non-place, the pedestrian is usually given very limited space to walk in, not enough to walk side by side, or comfortable enough to share with cyclists. People tend to walk more quickly here because it is uninviting and boring. In contrast, a place usually has much more room for walking, making it comfortable to walk with multiple people at the side. People walk slowly because there are many things to look at, and this level of engagement with one's surrounding reduces the distance a person experiences when walking. This explains why walking 1km in central Tuapayo feels much more enjoyable and seamless than walking 200 meters in this place. Having appropriate background noise levels in an area plays a role in how comfortable a place is. This is known as acoustic comfort. And the best way to assess this is by asking ourselves the question, is it easy to hold a conversation with someone else? In the book Cities for People, 60 dBA was found to be the upper limit of background noise levels for people to carry out conversations. And to see if there's a difference in that between places and non-places, I bought the noise meter and took some recordings. Here are my findings. On Kusu Island, I was able to get sound readings under 50 dBA, and I found it rather easy to have a conversation with my friend. In Tuapayo, I got sound recordings between 50 and 60 dBA. It's easy to hear people talking in the background, and I was still able to comfortably talk to store owners to buy goods. In contrast, along a busy road in Loyang, the background noise was as loud as 75 dBA. 
talking to someone else here requires significantly more effort, and this is certainly not a good place. You might not think much about it, but constant exposure to loud noise levels doesn't just cause people to be more irritable and annoyed. It has long-term health effects such as sleep disturbance, increased likelihood of getting diabetes, hypertension, stroke, cardiovascular diseases, and hearing loss. Being in a quiet place like this has many health benefits in addition to being able to converse with someone else comfortably. It's not just low noise levels that make a place comfortable. Respecting the human skill in urban design does play a role too. For example, this narrow street in Juchet has buildings placed closely to each other. This compact arrangement creates a sense of enclosure and staying here feels comfortable and cozy, just like being in an outdoor living room. There are many other elements to what forms the human skill, and I'll discuss more about those in a future video. Strategically placing trees can also help to cool the environment down, making it more comfortable for people to be in. Benches like this allow people to relax and soak into the environment. And small shops and cafes with seating that spill out onto the street allow people to enjoy a meal while spending more time outdoors. It is said that people come where people are, and this virtual cycle of increased human traffic forms the third characteristic of places. They are great to meet at. The number of people present at a place creates meeting opportunities for social activities, be it planned or unplanned, with one's loved ones or new people. An example would be how people gather around when someone plays the piano in primary school. They are the usual friends around that person, but also others who are interested. Some may choose to stand by the side and enjoy the boring playlist of limited repertoire, others may jam along, plus a few kids will take over the piano thinking that playing fast equals musicality. Or take for example, a game of chess in a walkable mixed-use area. There are people who plan to start the game, then others start gathering around the table, carefully observing each player's moves in fascination. These gatherings, no matter how casual, are platforms for people to form connections and build friendships, improving one's social life and mental health. It is a common misconception that places can only be made by placing a chunk of metal and glass, but this isn't necessarily true. Take for example, people going for a swim at Lazarus Island's beach, offering prayers and watching the world go by on Kusu Island having a break or taking a stroll down Pulau Ubin's Orchard Road. These are places that have little glass and metal, but because they fulfill all three characteristics, they are great places for everyone. Places aren't just things that people want, they form the foundation of human life that people need, and have been around for longer than you might think. The Romans have many places in their city, featuring compact streets, squares, and plazas for people to hang out and congregate. The different types of people intermingling at a place creates a special bond amongst these people, and these bonds give each place a unique character. This sense of belonging makes people care about them, which is why we see improvement works done by locals all over Singapore, ranging from large wall murals to tiny details. People do these works not for profit whatsoever, they do this out of their hearts because they value the environment and they care about places. Unfortunately, many people who love their community might not know how or don't dare to improve theirs. A notable case of this is Martin Silva's patio. Being a resident of Tuapayo, Martin used some basic furniture and decorations to transform the grass lawn in front of his home into a place for people to enjoy and congregate. It turned out to be very successful, with people lingering in the area, compared to the nondescript first floors of many HDB flats. With negotiations with the authorities, Martin managed to keep his patio open till this day, but this achievement was clinched only after he was handed multiple fines by the town council, amounting more than $2,000 in total, with the risk of his place being torn down. It was only after much online traction that his town's MP interceded and allowed him to continue in 2014. There are of course legal ways to create places, like a community cafe in Tampanese. But places like this are often too structured and institutionalized 
lacking the personal touch that are found in wholly bottom-up initiatives like Martin's Patio. While placemaking is rather common internationally, it is still a novel concept in Singapore, with small projects making headlines in the state media, and I believe that this needs to change. We need to have a greater mix of top-down and bottom-up driven places, and in general, way more places in the city that is still largely covered with non-places. Personally, when travelling abroad, it's the memories formed at places that I remember. Eating smelly tofu at Feng Jia Night Market in Taichung, checking out the quiet back streets in Tokyo, and tasting local food at Pasar Seni in KL, because each one of them has a unique charm, a distinct local flavour that is worth remembering. I've also been through many spaces, but I don't have vivid memories of them, nor are they worth remembering, such as being stuck on the expressway, finding a car parking lot, or walking down gigantic roads. To sum up, the three main characteristics that shape great places are fantastic walkability, great comfort to stay in, and ideal destinations for meeting. And to put simply, the best way to create more ground-up places is more flexibility and less bureaucracy. I'll end off this video with a quote by Jane Jacobs, author of The Death and Life of Great American Cities. Cities have the capability of providing something for everybody, only because, and only when, they are created by everybody. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. Special thanks to my patrons who've sponsored my boat ride to Pulau Ubin. If you'd like to fuel my habit of pointing a camera at random places, you may treat me a cup of tea at patreon.com slash Thanks!